dear sisters and brothers first of all i like to express my gratitude to the organizers and to all of you for giving me the opportunity to speak something before you as niyaz has already mentioned i represent the fish workers of india we have a 7000 km coastline where we have 10 coastal states and 9 million fish of folk in the marine sector alone and almost a similar number is working in the inland water bodies like lake lagoons and rivers national fish workers forum is a national apex body of the state level trade unions of fish workers we started receiving the blow of this new economic policy and this iwto designs right from the beginning of this decade when our government decided to open up our seas for the corporate fishing giants and we had to fight a long sustained battle for about 5 years to get rid of those demons the entire fishing community in the country came together and demonstrated their might and determination by three consecutive fishery strikes in the country bringing the entire sector into a halt we blockaded the commercial ports railroads harbors our leaders like thomas kochari went on hunger strike more than once and finally and probably as a first case we succeeded to rescind the government policy reverse the government policy of opening up the seas as soon as we got rid of this thing the another demon came that is the coastal industrial shrimp aquaculture that is also a program backed by this globalization policy of uh, liberalization and wto promoting trades big corporate houses multinational companies and their local agents all came to the shore all over the coastal areas of india encroaching the habitats of the fish of people and the places which were traditionally used by the coastal communities they have built hundreds of aquaculture farms and you must be might be, might be knowing aquaculture farms means the first casualty is one of the most beautiful gift of nature the mangrove forest they destroy it they erect huge banks dikes and they store saline water and by the process they salinate the underground water table and the people around suffer from scarcity of drinking water and they use pesticides hormones artificial things and also high potency feed which in turn in turn contaminates the water which is released to the seas and lakes and other water bodies that in effect pollutes the entire coastal water and depletes the fish stock fish of people lose their livelihood millions of fish of people depending on the coastal waters for their livelihood are on the verge of starvation and in india there is a coastal regulation zone notification a piece of legislation we have that nobody is permitted to conduct any activity within 500 meters of the high tide line which may affect the coastal ecology but that did not apply to this aquaculture farms they violated left and right we protested and we went to the supreme court of india the supreme court of india in a 
historical verdict on the 11th of December 1996 ordered all the state governments to demolish all the aquaculture farms from the coastal region. But I am very sorry to inform you our government failed to implement this Supreme Court verdict till date. It is almost three years now. On the other hand, they are trying to introduce a bill in the national parliament called Aquaculture Authority Bill intended to bypass the Supreme Court ju judgment and to permit this kind of aquaculture activities in the coastal region. We are now fighting against it. We are now in the thick of the battle. Entire fishing community of India is one. We know this is a global design. We know this is an outcome of this liberalization. We know this is being done in the, at, at the dictation of this WTO. And we are fighting it. There is an example for you. How does it affect us? There is the Chilka Lakes. Chilka is one of the large brackish water lakes in Asia. This is 3,000 square kilometers. About 60,000 fisher people live around Chilka. They solely depend on the Chilka for their livelihood for many generations. But over the last seven, eight years, the lake has been encroached by the aquaculture mafia. First government wanted to lease it out to corporate business houses like Tata's. We fought, we won in the court. But again they came in different, different names under different, different banners. And almost 70% of the lake has been encroached by the aquaculture, mafias. And the fisher people have hardly any place to fish to make a living. So we are again engaged in a battle. Major struggle, 29th of May this year, the fisher people of Chilika assembled at a, at a village called Sorana to demonstrate and to demand their, uh, demand to restore their right uh, to fish in the lake. And all on a sudden, the police sided with the aquaculture fellows, started firing. Four people were killed on the spot, including one woman, fisher woman. Four of them died on the spot. Another 24 were seriously injured. Five of them totally incapacitated. That is the situation there. We are in the midst of that struggle now. We have planned on the 25th, 21st of November next, the World Fisheries Day. 21st of November, World Fisheries Day, the fisher people of India are going to stop fishing in support of the Chilika struggle and demanding ban on aquaculture. It is going to be a major event there. Dear friends, we know we are facing a giant those who are taking away the livelihood of the people, who are converting the cheap protein of the people, the cheap food of the people, like small anchovies, small fishes, and other fish, to convert it into shrimp, to feed the overfed elsewhere, at the cost of the food of the local people, at the cost of the livelihood of the local people. Same is the story in the other neighboring countries in the region also. So we are very happy and we are hopeful that it is not a battle that we are fighting alone. We have found allies, as Niaz mentioned, in India, we have formed a national alliance of people's movement. 150 different independent movements from all over the country are brought under one umbrella 
and Father Kocher is the national convener of that organization. And we have decided to fight WTO in all possible manner, on all battlefields, wherever we can reach, wherever we can, uh, we can assemble. And we feel we are not alone. People like you are with us. I can assure you that the toiling millions of India, particularly the Fisher people, some 18 million of them, both in England and marine sector, are united with you in our struggle against WTO, and that we have demonstrated. I will not take your time anymore. You must be waiting for Father Thomas Kocheri to speak. I can assure you, and I promise, on behalf of the millions of fish workers of India, we shall fight up to the last and we shall overcome. Yeah. Victory is ours. Yeah. I promise not as an individual, individual, but as a spokesperson of the fishing community of India, I will carry this message wherever I go. I will keep on traveling because I am a traveler. And I like to end with a song in my own mother tongue. I will try to give you the translation, of course. I am a nomad. Jajabar, uh, Jajabar is a Bangla word, Bengali word, which stands for nomad. I am a nomad, as maybe all of us. I am a nomad. I have made the entire world my home, so I don't have any particular home address. I have chosen the road, and the people of the road has become my own people, so wherever I go, that is my address. I have taken color from the cave paintings of Elora in India. Cave paintings, ancient. So from there I have taken color and I have taken it to Chicago. And from there I have taken some more color and I traveled to Ottawa. From there I went to Austria, reached Paris. I was fishing and navigating in the Ganges, the Ganga in India. But ultimately I reached Volga via Mississippi. I learned the poems and couplets of the famous Persian poet Ghalib from the minarets of Tashkent in Russia. And I learned Gorky. I understood Gorky when I visited the tomb of Mark Twain. There are many nomads. They may not have a definite destination, but I have a definite goal which keeps on changing and hence it doesn't remain definite. I have seen a lot of skyscrapers kissing the sky, but at the same time I have seen people homeless, sleeping in the shadows of those skyscrapers. I have seen rose and mar marigolds plenty blossoming in the posh gardens of the world to do people. But at the same time I have seen innumerable birds unbloomed. It fallen, fallen to the earth, on the earth and eating the dust. Also I have seen the sense of possessiveness, a greed and uh, a desire of domination has broken many happy families, happy nations. And wherever I have seen this kind of contradiction, I was stuck. I stopped traveling. I wanted to address it. And when I got any other call from anywhere, I kept on traveling. That is why I am a nomad. Ami ek jajabar, Ami ek jajabar, jajabar is nomad, I am a nomad. Ami ek jajabar, Prithi bhi amake apon koreche, Bhule chini jerghar, 
আমি এক যাজাবর আমি ইলোরার থেকে রং নিয়ে দূরে শিকাগো শহরে দিয়েছি অটোয়ার থেকে অস্ট্রিয়া হয়ে প্যারিসের ধুলো মেখেছি আমি ইলোরার থেকে রং নিয়ে দূরে শিকাগো শহরে দিয়েছি অটোয়ার থেকে অস্ট্রিয়া হয়ে প্যারিসের ধুলো মেখেছি আমি গঙ্গার থেকে মিসিসিপি হয়ে ভোলগার রূপ দেখেছি গালিবের শের তাস কন্দের মিনারে বসে শুনেছি আই হ্যাভ স্টার্টেড ফিশিং ইন গঙ্গা বাট আই রিস্ট বলগা বাই আ মিসিসিপি আমি গঙ্গার থেকে মিসিসিপি হয়ে ভোলগার রূপ দেখেছি গালিবের শের তাস কন্দের মিনারে বসে শুনেছি মাঘ টোয়েনের সমাধিতে গিয়ে গর্কির কথা জেনেছি বারে বারে আমি পথের টানেতে পথেই বেঁধেছি আমি এক যাযাবর দি দি পথ দি রোড হ্যাজ অ্যাট্রাক্টেড মি অ্যাগেন এন্ড অ্যাগেন অ্যান্ড মাঘ টোয়েন হ্যাজ কল মি অ্যাগেন এন্ড অ্যাগেন টু লার্ন অ্যাবাউট গর্কি মাঘ টোয়েনের সমাধিতে গিয়ে গর্কির কথা জেনেছি বারে বারে আমি পথের টানেতে পথেই বেঁধেছি গাট আমি এক যাযাবর বহু যাযাবর লক্ষ্য বিহীন আমার রয়েছে পন রঙের খনি যেখানে পেয়েছি রাঙিয়ে নিয়েছি মন দের আর মেনি নোমার্স দে মে নট হ্যাভ এনি ডেস্টিনেশন বাট আই হ্যাভ এ ডেফিনিট ডেস্টিনেশন সো হোয়ার এভার আই হ্যাভ গন হোয়ার এভার আই হ্যাভ সিন কালার আই হ্যাভ টেক এন সাম কালার ফ্রম দেয়ার অ্যান্ড আই কালার্ড মাই সেলফ উইথ দ্যাট পিস অফ কালার সো আই অ্যাম এ কালারফুল পার্সন আই ডোন্ট হ্যাভ এ পার্টিকুলার কালার আই বিলং টু এভরি কালার এভরি রিজিয়ন এভরি রেস বহু যাযাবর লক্ষ্য বিহীন আমার রয়েছে পন রঙের খনি যেখানে পেয়েছি রাঙিয়ে নিয়েছি মন আমি দেখেছি অনেক গগন চুম্মি অট্টালিকার সারি তার ছায়াতেই দেখেছি অনেক গৃহহীন নর নারী আই হ্যাভ সিন লট অফ হাই রাইজার্স কিসিং দ্য স্কাই বাট এলাস আই হ্যাভ সিন so many homeless people living in the shadows of those skyscrapers ami dekhechi onek gogon chumbi ottalikar sari tar chhayati dekhechi onek grihohin noronari homeless ami dekhechi onek golap bokul phute ache thore thore abar dekhechi nafota phuler kolira jhore geche onadhore i have seen lot of roses and marigolds blossoming in the post gardens but at the same time innumerable birds falling down for want of care ami dekhechi onek golap bokul phute ache thore thore abar dekhechi na phota phuler kolira jhore geche onadore premhin bhalobasha deshe deshe bhengeche sukher ghor pother manush apon hoyeche apon hoyeche por ami ek jajabor আমি এক যাযাবর আমি ভোলগা গঙ্গার থেকে মিসিসিপি হয়ে ভোলগার রূপ দেখেছি অটোয়ার থেকে অস্ট্রিয়া হয়ে প্যারিসের ধুলো মেখেছি মাক টোয়েনের সমাধিতে গিয়ে গর্কির কথা জেনেছি বারে বারে আমি পথের টানে পথেই বেঁধেছি ঘর আমি এক যাযাবর আমি এক যাযাবর my dear friends <clears throat> it's always difficult to 
listen to truth. It is a uh, very difficult to accept the truth still further. And sometimes we have to lay down our life for standing for the truth. There is no other way of realizing the truth. That is the history in the world. There is no shortcut to this. So my talk today is globalization and marginalization. A challenge to think globally and act globally. We all talk about globalization, liberalization, structural adjustment, WTO, we all talk. And uh, people have different meanings to each of these words. But let me explain what do I mean? What do I mean by globalization? Globalization is a process that has ensured a free movement of capital and the market determines everything. This market has no interest whatsoever of the basic needs of the majority of the people in the world. This market has only one value, that is profit. Nations are not bothered, all those who are signed WTO. They want, to, each nation wants to survive on the basis of this free movement of capital and market. In another sense, profit is possible only from consumer goods, not from food, not from clothes, not from health that is meant for the majority of the people in the world. Globalization is only a movement of capital for making profit. And uh, globalization, it is a word used as an absolute and inevitable that everybody has to fall in line. That's the myth created by WTO and by corporate rule. And take little aside, these people make us all fools that globalization does not mean movement of labor. So we, they have created a nation state theory so that visas and passports, movement of labor, no. So movement of capital, movement of consumer goods, everything is all right. But what kind of uh, globalization is this? Because the basic, one of the basic content of products is labor. That should not be moved. 
This is what I understand by globalization. So when did this start? This globalization did not start in the 90s. No, no, no. That is again we are mistaken. They make us all believe that the nations are going to survive through the globalization of the 90s. Structural adjustment, GART and everything, World Bank, IMF, everything is created with another myth saying that we are going to survive through this. No. We started, the world started the, the globalization with colonialism. Globalization began in the 16th century when Europe was overpopulated and Europe was the most unemployed place in the world. Not Asia, not India, not China. Europe was most overpopulated in the 16th century. And they began to migrate to all the continents in the world from Europe. And to address the overpopulation and to address the unemployment in Europe. And they started migrating to all the continents and some wanted to come to India for a trade, but ended up in America. And they thought they are going to see the brown Indians, but they saw the red Indians. <laughs> and we have to learn this history as discovering the new continent. We have to learn in the world history all over, wherever the colonial rule was, we learned Columbus discovered America. Still we have to learn, it's not rewritten. It is not rewritten. Still, we are all fools learning this again and again as if there were no people in America, as if there were no people in India, as if there were no people in China, as if there were no people in the, all the civilization which Hare Krishna was quoting before. Before the Europe saw the civilization, there were civilizations in the world. No, they are making us all fools once again. And migration started with sword and cross going together. Sword and cross. What is this? Cross is the result of sword. Cross was the result of the powerful Roman Empire. Jesus was crucified because of that, because he stood for the truth. And this very cross and sword went, to, went together in history in the name of globalization, in the name of migration, went and conquered the people, destroyed cultures, converted the people and what is up? Exploited the resources, accumulated wealth and that's how they addressed the migrate, uh, addressed the overpopulation and that's how they addressed the unemployment and after migration to all the continents in the world they created a new law, a new law that taking away community ownership of the land which were belonged to the people. As when I stand here, I still remember that great memory of Chief of Seattle. We have to read again and again to cherish the memory that, that time, 
he was the chief whoever may be that they were conscious of what is going on the globalization he addressed at that time but we are not able to understand the globalization that is destroying buying and selling land which you cannot that is part of me you cannot sell the land you cannot sell environment you cannot sell the air air they never they never thought that this would happen in the history the the aboriginals the natives the tribals they never thought that the land would be sold the water will be sold forest will be sold even now we may think air will not be sold but it will be sold if the globalization continues like this <laughs> so the accumulation of wealth and destruction of environment changing the whole the stewardship or the belongingness to the earth the pattern was changed and what was what did happen the market everything was determined by profit and wealth and what happened coming to the 20th century according to the un report not my report un report says 80% of the world's population has only 20% of the world's wealth technology industry everything and the 20% of the world's population has 80% of the world's riches technology industry everything this is the sum and substance of the colonialism and migration and this happened through migration of people migration of people to all the continents and the very same people are saying no more migration that is the new globalization <laughs> i don't know i don't know people make the whole world fools as if we can understand all this so the the political liberals and struggle went on in all the colonial countries india gave the leadership in this and most of the countries in the colonial world became free political freedom all over the world was an achievement of the people struggle but economic exploitation continued by the mnc's multinational companies and the transnational companies the economic exploitation continued south africa got freedom but the economic exploitation continues there is no doubt about it mandela cannot do anything this is true of all so what is the new globalization what is this new globalization the new globalization used to take away the 20% of the wealth in the hands of the 80% that is the new globalization that's all that's all so the accumulation of the wealth and the determination of the market economy go side by side with the marginalization of the vast majority of the people not only in india not only in the south but also in the united states <laughs> just to give you an example i was there in uh, 
half moon bay of San Francisco attending the World Forum of fish workers and fish harvesters. A woman, Barbara Stickle, she is the secretary of the Pacific Federation of Fishermen's Association. With the tears in her eyes, saying that the state has given us a quota of 500 pounds of fish to be caught every month. That's all. 500 pounds is their quota a month. Whereas the entire quota goes to the industrial fleets, the big giants, the big sharks who are ruling the WTO and who are ruling the United States. Can you imagine of a family has to survive in the United States with 500 pounds of fish to be caught and to be sold and has to survive? So what will happen? The entire poor fishing, coastal fishing community will be wiped out within one or two years in United States. You will have a few giants of industrial fleets in this country, in this United States. So this is not in India. This is happening in the United States. Because if that happens in somewhere else, it's no problem. But you have to ask your ruling class. That is, whether it's in India or in the United States, the ruling class are all same. There is no difference. They are all supporting the corporate rule, WTO. They are all united in one hand. So we have, we have the latest myth that is information technology. And they made us believe Microsoft or whoever may be, that is also in Seattle. They made us believe that this is the latest technology, free information. Everybody is free to take it. <laughs> Who? Even in the United States, maybe about 20, 25 percent may be using. Forget about that. What poor country, India? We have to, whole day, we have to sit in front of the uh, computer to open the email. It will not open. So, this is the free information for India. What I am trying to say is that this information technology also is used to exploit the whole world. The faster the, faster the business, the more you make the money. That is the market economy. So these people are placed in a much better way than anybody else to make more profit. That is true. That is true. That's why within a short period, Microsoft person is the biggest, the, the richest man in the world in a short time. No problem. It's a big achievement. It's a big achievement of the United States. Why can't it be? But exploiting the, all the intellectuals in the world. Because everybody has to fall in line with this uh, English and the software. Everything has to go move like that. And uh, all the cheapest labor is exploited without even migration or movement. And India has the biggest export of Microsoft. Where? Hmm. Because it is cheaper. 
If it is produced in the United States, it will be more costly, then he will not be able to make more money. Without movement of people, you can exploit the whole world. Now it's the, that is the globalization. You can go to the border of Mexico and the United States, thousands of industries are there exploiting the poor Mexicans. You can go to the inner cities of New York. You are talking about human rights. There the children are employed in the inner cities of New York. We are talking of human rights. We are the, the great guardians of human rights and democracy. Huh? What kind of democracy is this? When the vast majority is in the pavements, they are in the without uh, huts, without clothes, without education, without health. This is the latest human rights. This is the latest democracy in the world. Further, all this accumulated wealth is used to produce mass destructive weapons. The five nations in the world have 60,000 atomic bombs to destroy the whole world maybe 10 times. This would have been used for the production of life. Disease accumulated and exploited wealth is used to buy five nations and they are the security, they are the security council that has to control the whole world. Can you imagine? Can you imagine of such democracy and such human rights are going on? And after the Second World War, where the people realized the need for one another, That's how the United States, uh, Nations came into being. That's how the UNESCO, UNESCO, ILO, WHO, all these came into. But they are all dead, finished. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Because America does not want to pay their share. So they appoint a person whom, you know, America say appoint a person as Secretary General so that he will have to dance according to the tune of the President. <laughs> so all the, all the democratic structures are collapsed. Only the trade survives. Only the trade survives. There is nothing else left. Is there any value left? Profit. Profit. You know, the WTO and this ruling class can operate now with the latest technology, they don't have to go to the people now. They can operate within the four walls of a room through internet and computer. They don't have to go out at all. And they have the latest everything. What happens? These are, these neurotics are ruling the whole world. <laughs> because they have no interaction with the people. They have no social interaction. They have nothing of values, of solidarity of the people, concern for people, sacrifice for the people. They have no concern for poverty, the mass sufferings, 
mass destruction, displacement that is going on all over the world. They are not interested because they are with the computer inside the four walls. They are deciding for the whole world. So these neurotics are ruling the whole world through WTO. This is the end result of globalization which we are facing. If you come to the fisheries, which already he said, the fisheries all over the world is 75% of the fishing grounds are destroyed through these giants and globalization. The, the vast majority of the fishing community who are depending on these life resources are displaced. These victims have come together and formed a world body. And we were having that coordination committee in uh, the beaches of Half Moon Bay of San Francisco. These are the victims of fishing communities all over the world. We are in a major campaign, not only in India, but all over the world, to regain to regain once again the ownership of water bodies, sea and river, and land and forest that belongs to the fishing communities and the tribals and natives who are depending on these resources for livelihood. They have no right to sell and buy they live on those. That is to go back before the colonialism. This is the struggle in which we are in. And that should be the struggle of the whole world where we have to survive as a humanity, as one humanity. If we want to survive as one humanity, we have to take control of all these we are coming to uh, the great jubilee year in the 16th century if christianity went with this globalization if anything left in the name of Christianity in the world. The 2000 Jubilee year where these appropriated, accumulated wealth in the hands of G8 countries in the world, they have to write off all the debts in the world. If any sense of Christianity and ethics left, they have to do this. Otherwise, you are making a mockery of Christianity. You are making a mockery of Jesus Christ. You are making a mockery of humanity. This is created by accumulated debt, is created by these G8 countries, World Bank and IMF. You give a loan for what? To sell their weapons, to fight among us, ourselves. They produce weapons and they give weapons and for that they give a loan. Then next year they have to pay the interest. Then they give another loan to pay back the interest. Then the debt increased. Then on the third year, they can't even pay back the debt, even by giving a loan. 
What are you going to do? So this is the kind of vicious circle in which we are. This is created by, by the G8 countries. Both, both the so-called socialist world and the capitalist world, they follow growth model economy. You have to, every year, you have to increase 5%, 6% growth. How? I don't know. See, the natural capital or the natural life resources, sea, land and forest do not grow. Will it grow every year? It's going down. Everywhere, all over the world, is going down, it's not growing. So, the growth is achieved by depleting the life resources all over the world. That can be fisheries, that can be forests, or mega dams. Mega dams, the biggest mega dam is in China, Three Gorges. That is, the reservoir is almost as big as my state, Kerala state. They have already displaced 200,000 people already. It's not complete. Now, the ruling class asks those people, take your bag and walk. Wherever you find empty places, you stay on there. You can't protest. You cannot protest. They cannot proceed and they cannot go backward. Now, that is the problem. Gorgeous. This is the growth model economy even in China. So the growth model economy is depleting the resource, life resources, natural capital all over the world. So we need zero growth. That only will sustain the life resources, but we need distributive justice, ethics. That only will change the situation. In Kerala state, in India, in the 70s or in the 60s, we had land reform. Very small, it's not a big level land reform. Because of that, the health situation, the death rate, the the, the birth rate, education, literacy is almost comparable to the first world. That is through distrib small distributive justice. If the G8 countries or G5, the, the atomic clubs, India also tried to become part of the atomic club by bursting a cracker in Pokhran. Yeah. They thought that by bursting a cracker, they also would be included in the atomic club. <laughs> the mass destructions. 60,000 atomic weapons, they want to become part of that mass destructions, our Indian ruling class. Is it possible? Maybe possible. By killing the 50% of the population, maybe possible so that they don't have to worry. If 2%, 2% of the investment made on atomic weapons is used to for the sustenance of life, the poverty in the world can be wiped out. Food can be given to everybody. Gandhi said, we have enough resources for the need of all. But 
We don't have enough resources for the greed of all. So WTO is representing the greed of the people, not the need of the people. WTO on globalization is a representation of a demon, demon that is greed. WTO on globalization is a demoniac expression of profit. WTO and globalization is a demon that you want to kill the majority of the people in the world. And here we are all sitting at least in solidarity in the north and the south and wherever there are some human concern wherever there are some interaction with human beings, wherever there are some social interactions, we are still surviving. And we have to create a new world. We have to create a new world. And 30th November in Seattle, have to make a histor history in the world that destroying this demon of WTO. That is the 30th November. The responsibility is on your shoulder. In the name of Chief of Seattle, in the name of the majority of the people in the world, we have to take that responsibility. Then there is meaning for your life. There is a goal in your life. There is a divine presence in your life. There is goodness in your life where we can destroy this demon. Development is not by conquering and enslaving. That is the divine dimension. Not by accumulating and centralizing. Not by displacing peoples and destroying cultures. True development is only by integrating and working together. Through distributive justice and decentralization. By nurturing and including natives, tribals and indigenous peoples. The life of the planet and the dependent health and welfare of humanity must not be sacrificed to the greed of the few. Thank you.